A fertis priest is a person who acts as a medium between the dead and the living in Ghana and other West African nations. A fertis shrine is where fertis priests often reside and worship their gods. In the shrine, the priest or priestess conducts rites to consult with and beg the gods' favor. Today we will discuss the mystery, myth and the legendary fertis priest known as Okonfuanoche in Ghana. The great Ghanaian Fretis priest was born in Ewukugwa, a town in Ghana's eastern region, in 1655, almost 200 years after the first European settlement on the Gold Coast. His birth was a fascinating one that startled everyone who witnessed it. He was born with a tail of a cow in his hand. The midwives who attended to his mother were perplexed since they had never seen or heard anything like it. They then summoned his father, Ano, to come see what his wife had delivered. They yelled, Ano Che, which translates as Ano Luke in the Tripon language, which is commonly spoken in the region. The Akan word for a cow's tail, Podia, is said to have been a talisman. The people believe the talisman was a gift from the gods and prove that Anotche was born to be great. If you are putting into a leadership position in your family, like a family head or a chief of a town, everywhere you go, your people would like to see you coming back home with an achievement. So when they came and there was such a position, Every one of them was willing to take this position back home for the people to know that he came and there was a position and he fought for it. Okonfo Anoche was a co-founder of the Asante Kingdom and was regarded as the Asante people's finest lawgiver and wisest sage in Western Africa. <laughs> had a significant influence on the Asante nation upon its inception. He is the primary builder of Asante laws, customs, and supernatural beliefs. The Asante empire overthrew neighboring kingdoms including the Akans people's Dentra, 1699. The Asante army was initially ineffective during the two-year Dentra Asante conflict. According to reports, Anoche King Osei Tutu's advisor chanted incantations at the Dentra army, leading the majority of the army's generals to desert to the Asante side. As a consequence, the Asante people overcame the Dentra, took possession of Elmina Castle, and Anoche earned his reputation as a powerful priest. There are several accounts of the priest's outstanding acts and miraculous healing. Among Okonfo Anoche's miracles are Okonfo's magical might brought the Asante chiefdoms together to become the Asante Empire. He directed the golden stool to descend on Osei Tutu's knees, establishing him as the first monarch of the Asante Empire. In 1699, Anoche's priestly influence aided the Asante in their conquest of the Dentra. He climbed palm trees while wearing his sandals. Rivers were diverted by the priest. The rain never landed on his roofless abode. Okonfo carried a basket of water without dropping a drop. He buried a magical sword in the ground that has never been removed. Anoche sunk a sword into the ground to symbolize the unification of the Asante and Enzima communities. It was part of a sign agreement that they would never fight each other again. Okonfo Anoche's sword is still on display in a Kumasi 
hospital. The people think that removing it will inhalate the Asante nation. He ordered the rain to cease pouring during a traditional festival. Anoche had the ability to teleport from one location to another within seconds. He walked in the rain every day without getting wet. A Kung Fu grew plantain in one day in front of a crowd. On the same day, they harvested and prepared it. Anoche used his bare fingers to construct a board for Oare, a pit and pebble game from a stone slab. A palm tree sprang where he poured a drag of palm wine. The tree is located in the town of Awukugwa. Its fruits is gathered annually and distributed among the seven traditional stew holders in the region. When Kinose Tutu died in 1717, Okonfo Anoche returned to his native Equiapim. He died between 1717 and 1719 in Trepatre Kumase. His demise was mysterious. No one grieved him since it was assumed he went to bring the key to death. When he did not return, the village folks realized he was gone for good. His renown and notoriety skyrocketed following his death. Okonfo Anoche is one of Ghana's most well-known Asian leaders today. People make songs and poetry in his honor. He forewarned that destroying the golden stool or letting it be captured by the enemy would devastate the Asante kingdom. Even though it's a myth, a lot of people People believe it's true. To conclude, Okonfo Anochi deserves greater praise for his commitment and selflessness as a political and religious leader. He isn't talked about enough. Historians claim that Anochi possessed the intellectual, emotional, and oratory strength to persuade the neighboring nations to join the Asante Empire by uniting under Osei Tutu. He was also a superb legislator. He was said to have provided the Asante with norms of behavior. It included all aspects of life, including conception, child rearing, puberty rights, sexual behavior, installing chiefs, national governance, and death and burial ceremonies. The renowned priest Okonfo Anoche was like that. His exploits and superhuman abilities are still evident in the pageantry of the Asantis in Ghana today. Visit Ghana to witness the magical sword that cannot be removed. Thanks for watching. Be sure to stick around for more informative videos coming soon.